After the battle against Ultron, Hulk ends up on a planet where he becomes the gladiatorial champion, having to face Thor and Fenrir himself to keep his title. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Thor, Ragnarok, from 2017. Traveling through the universe in search of the Infinity Gems, Thor ends up being captured by Sir Tor, the fire giant. With the God of Thunder in chains, the Colossus tells him that Ragnarok has already begun and that Asgard will fall as soon as he places his crown in the Eternal Flame, unleashing all his power. Thor then says that the Eternal Flame is locked away in Asgard and Sir Tor replies that Odin is no longer in the realm of the gods, which has left the place vulnerable. Even though he found it strange, Thor wasted no more time talking and summoned Mjolnir, breaking free of the chains and starting to fight Searcher's army. Taking advantage of the fact that the Fire Giant's dragon is chained, the God of Thunder defeats most of the enemies and goes after Sir Tor, using his hammer to remove the Titan's skull. After defeating him, Odin's successor binds the skull with chains and asks Heimdall to take it back to Asgard, without suspecting that Scourge is now in charge of the Bifrost. Trying to impress some women, the new guardian of the realms doesn't listen to Thor's plea for help, forcing the Asgardian god to flee the lair through the roof. On the surface of Muspelheim, Thor is caught by the dragon and has to stop it by putting Mjolnir in its mouth. In the Bifrost, the women hear Thor's call and alert Scourge, who uses Heimdall's sword to open the portal. As a result, the dragon's head is also taken to Asgard, dragging itself through the passageway of the kingdoms and dirtying everything along the way. Seeing Scourge, Thor asks where Heimdall is and the man tells him that Odin has accused the former guardian of being a traitor. Finding everything very strange, Thor uses Mjolnir to fly to the Palace of the Gods, where he finds a statue in honor of Loki and a group of actors staging a play about the battle against the Dark Elves. Looking around, Thor sees Odin lying down eating grapes and remembers what Sir Thor said. When the play is over, the God of Thunder goes to his supposed father and shows him Searcher's skull, handing the object over for safekeeping. Knowing that this isn't Odin, Thor begins to talk about the chaos that is spreading across the Nine Kingdoms and the phony continues to lie, saying that he's too busy for that. With no options left, Thor throws the hammer away and holds the false Odin's head while he calls back his weapon, forcing Loki to reveal himself and move out of the way so as not to be hit. Furious, the Avenger asks about his father and threatens his brother to take him to Odin, leaving the god of trickery with no options. On Earth, Loki takes Thor to where he left Odin and discovers that the place is being demolished. While they think about what to do, a portal opens at the feet of the god of lies, causing him to disappear and a card with an address to appear in his place. When he arrives on the scene, the son of Odin meets the Doctor Strange, who says that Loki is a danger and asks why Thor has brought him to Earth. When he learns that they have come to find Odin, Doctor Strange tells him that their father is in Norway and opens a portal so that he and Loki can find him. When he sees his children again, Odin says that he doesn't have much time and claims that Ragnarok has already begun, saying that his era has passed and that the goddess of Underworld is coming. Everyone's father then says that he can no longer leave Hela imprisoned and that she will cause Ragnarok as a way of getting revenge by taking the throne of Asgard. Upon hearing the story, Thor says that they can stop it and Odin replies that this is their fight, disappearing into the light shortly afterwards. After the perishment of his father, Thor is furious with Loki and small sparks of lightning form from his fingers, but before they can start attacking each other, Hela appears, forcing the two to join forces against her. Seeing her younger brothers, the woman orders them to kneel and they both refuse. In response, Thor throws the hammer, but Hela manages to hold it as if it were nothing, destroying the hammer with one hand. Seeing her level of power, Loki orders Scourge to take them back, a bad idea as Hela is too close and ends up being pulled along with them. While traveling through the universe, the three brothers begin to fight each other and Hela manages to throw them both out, causing them to fall at random points in the universe. In Asgard, Hela arrives alone and starts attacking Thor's friends, taking their lives with extreme ease. Seeing her level of power, Scourge says he's just the janitor and kneels before the goddess, promising to serve her. Wandering through the universe, Thor lands in the middle of a garbage dump on the planet Sakaar, where he is found by a group of masked nomads who begin to attack him. Suddenly, a ship interrupts and a woman emerges from inside, saying that Thor belongs to her and machine gunning the group with her ship. After everyone has been pulverized, the woman places a strange chip around Thor's neck, giving him a shock that causes the God of Thunder to black out. In Asgard, Hela presents herself to the legions and asks them to kneel before her, but after finding out about Odin's perishment, the soldiers refuse and start attacking her. Being extremely powerful, the goddess of underworld and destruction manages to defeat everyone by fighting completely alone, but because of this, she doesn't notice when Heimdall steals Bifrost's sword. After capturing Thor, the woman takes him to the Grand Master, 
the leader of Sakaar and founder of the Tournament of Champions. Seeing the God of Thunder, the Grand Master is very interested in his potential and pays the fortune the woman asks for, thinking he will be a good challenger for his champion. After buying the God of Thunder, Sakaar's leader explains a little more about the tournament. As he speaks, Thor sees Loki sitting on a nearby bench and asks for his brother's help, but the God of Trickery says he can't let him go. The Grand Master then says that there is only one way for Thor to get his freedom and that is to defeat his current champion. Wanting to get out of there quickly, the God of Thunder agrees and asks him to take him to his opponent, even though he has no idea who he is. After he agrees, the Grand Master takes him to the entrance of the Gladiators, where he meets Korg and the other competitors. Seeing the creature, Thor asks if he is the champion and Korg denies it, saying that he stays elsewhere. Curious, the son of Odin asks what his opponent will be like and the Stone Colossus says he doesn't know, because everyone who has faced the champion has been eliminated during the battle. Even so, Thor is not intimidated and prepares for combat, kneeling down and beginning to pray to Odin. In the palace of Asgard, Hela goes to the vault of Allfather and uses the Eternal Flame to revive the ancient warriors who are gone, including Fenrir himself. When the time comes to fight, Thor is choosing a weapon to use when he sees the woman who captured him drinking in the bar. When he sees her, Korg tells him that she is from Asgard and Thor decides to approach her to talk about Hela. When he does, the God of Thunder sees the symbol of the Valkyries tattooed on the girl's arm and tries to talk about what is happening in Asgard. Even after learning about Hela, the Valkyrie, doesn't seem to care and leaves while Thor is carried off to fight the champion. Before the battle, Stan Lee cuts Thunderlord's hair before he is taken to the center of the Colosseum, where he is booed by the crowd. On the other hand, when the Grandmaster announces the champion, the spectators cheer and applaud until the Incredible Hulk enters the arena. Seeing another Avenger, Thor also celebrates, thinking that he will be an ally, while Loki tries to run away in fear. In the arena, the son of Odin tries to talk to Banner, but the Hulk replies that Bruce is gone and attacks his former ally, kicking him against the wall. Using the Emerald Giant's own hammer, Thor strikes back with absurd force, knocking Hulk away. Even so, the God of Thunder doesn't want to fight and calmly approaches the Greenish Giant, trying to keep him calm while stretching out his arm to help him up. Taking advantage of the gap, the Hulk grabs Thor by the leg and starts throwing him around. As this doesn't work, the Thunderlord uses the hammer to disarm Hulk and hits him several times, followed by even more punches. After knocking the giant down, Thor picks up the hammer and tries to deliver the final blow, but the Hulk manages to grab the weapon and throw the son of Odin away, jumping on top of him and hitting him with a series of punches that open a crater in the ground. About to lose his life, Thor awakens the power of thunder and strikes a bolt of lightning that knocks the Hulk away. With lightning emanating from his body, the son of Odin rushes towards the Emerald Giant and throws a punch so powerful that it creates a shockwave. Thanks to this, the crowd begins to hope that he can defeat the champion and they start to cheer for Thor, but the Grand Master decides to interfere, using his control to activate the chip in Thor's neck, causing him to faint from the shock. With his opponent unconscious, Hulk jumps to the top of the Colosseum and lands a super punch on the God of Thunder, winning the fight. In Asgard, Hela recruits Scourge to be her executioner, handing him an axe so that he can fight alongside her. Ready to conquer all the kingdoms, the goddess of the underworld goes to Bifrost, where she finally realizes that the sword has been taken. In the middle of the forest, Heimdall helps some young Asgardians escape from Hela's zombie soldiers, eliminating them all with his sword. After defeating the enemies, the protector of the Bifrost leads the group to a hiding place where other Asgardians are taking refuge. Back on Sakaar, Thor finally wakes up to find the Hulk bathing in a bathtub. Now that he's calmer, Thor asks him how he got to the planet and the Hulk replies that he fell there in one of Stark's jets, pointing to where the vehicle is. Excited, Thor says that he will take him back home and Hulk refuses, saying that the people of Earth hate him and that he will stay in Sakaar. Unable to count on the Avengers' help, Thor communicates with Heimdall and asks him to see what is happening in Asgard. The all-seeing protector then uses his powers to bring Thor's mind to Asgard, where he tells him that they are surrounded by Hela's soldiers. Knowing that they will soon be found, Heimdall says that they will try to reach the Bifrost to escape, and that they need his help to do so. Despite his request, Thor says he doesn't know where he is and Heimdall says that to get to Asgard he has to go through the biggest wormhole in the sky. Back on Sakaar, Thor has a fit of rage and says that the Hulk is a terrible Avenger, claiming that everyone on Earth hates him. Seeing how much this hurts the giant, Odin's son apologizes and makes amends, asking him for a favor. With the Hulk's help, Thor manages to convince the Valkyrie to listen to him and tells her that Odin perished, as well as talking about Hela's return. 
While the woman tells him how she was betrayed by Asgard, Thor takes the opportunity to steal the control and remove the device from his neck, giving him a clear path to the jet. After he starts the ship, the Hulk arrives and begs him to stay, but he's too big and ends up destroying the jet circuits. While it crashes, the computer displays one last message from the Black Widow, which makes Hulk calm down and finally turn back into Banner. Back in his human form, the scientist asks about Ultron and Thor says that was two years ago, revealing that he has been in the form of the Hulk for that entire period. At that moment, the Grand Master displays a message to everyone on the planet, telling them that their champion has been taken and asking them to bring him back. After displaying the message, the Grand Master asks to speak to Loki and Valkyrie, giving them an hour to bring them back. As soon as they leave the leader's room, the two begin to fight each other and Loki immediately realizes that she is a Valkyrie, entering the woman's mind to see the end of the warriors at the hands of Hela. In the middle of the city, Banner and Thor disguise themselves and start looking for a way to escape. Along the way, they meet Valkyrie, who for some reason decides to help them by taking them to Loki, who is in chains. Now that everyone is together, Thor says that they must go through the wormhole and that all that remains is to find a ship. Despite having one, the Valkyrie says that hers won't last the journey and suggests stealing one from the Grand Master. To get the guards out of the way, the Valkyrie goes to the Colosseum and takes the chip from all the gladiators, handing them weapons so that Korg and the others can start a revolution. As chaos spreads throughout the city, Thor and Loki invade the Grand Master's home and eliminate everyone they meet along the way, arriving at the spaceship. Before getting on the jet, Loki splits in two and goes for a gun without his brother seeing. The god of trickery then says that it's nothing personal and that he just wants the reward on his head, but Thor was already expecting this and implanted a chip in his back, leaving Loki immobilized on the ground from the shock. Alone, the god of thunder takes the ship and starts flying it out of the city, while being chased by soldiers. Using her ship, Valkyrie throws Banner in with Thor and starts shooting at the pursuers, but her vehicle is destroyed in the process. In midair, the woman starts jumping from one ship to another, destroying everything she can, helped by Thor who does the same. Together, the two destroy their pursuers and jump back onto the Grand Master's ship, heading towards the wormhole. Still on the ground, Korg and the other gladiators also have the idea of stealing a ship and find Loki lying on the ground, deactivating the chip and taking him with them. Inside the wormhole, Thor and the others travel at top speed towards Asgard. In the realm of the gods, Scourge gathers the Asgardians and tells them that someone has stolen the Bifrost Sword, saying that they will pay dearly if no one tells them where it is. Despite the threat, no one says anything. But they change their minds when Hela chooses a woman for Scourge to eliminate. Just then, Thor's ship comes out of the wormhole and they finally arrive in Asgard. As they fly over the kingdom, the God of Thunder says he will stay in the palace to distract Hela while Banner and Valkyrie help evacuate the citizens. In the hideout, Heimdall realizes that Hela is already outside and tries to retreat with the crowd, running towards the Bifrost. In the palace, Thor attracts the attention of Hela, who comes to see him, ordering her brother off her throne and advancing towards him. On the bridge to the Bifrost, the refugees run into Fenrir who blocks their way. Wanting to protect them, Heimdall orders everyone to retreat and draws his sword while Loki's son runs towards him. Just then, Banner and Valkyrie arrive with the ship and start shooting at the giant dog. Even so, the refugees are not safe, as Scourge and the zombie soldiers appear on the other side of the bridge. Cornered, the people decide to fight while Thor confronts Hela with Odin's spear. Without his hammer, Thor is unable to face his older sister and is easily defeated, losing one of his eyes in the fight. On the bridge, Banner realizes that the shots are having no effect and decides to take action by throwing himself off the ship. Despite this, he just falls to the ground unconscious. After smelling it, Fenrir continues to run towards Heimdall until the Hulk appears and grabs him by the tail, throwing him from side to side. With his colossal strength, the Avenger begins to confront the Wolf of the Apocalypse while Heimdall and the refugees face Hela's soldiers. Defeated, Thor is taken to the balcony by his sister, who shows the people being massacred by her army. When Heimdall is about to be eliminated, Korg appears to save him, asking everyone to board the ship while Loki and the gladiators face the soldiers. Furious, Hela plunges a dagger through Thor's back, claiming that she is the goddess of destruction and that Odin's son is nothing but a false deity. About to lose consciousness, Thor has a vision with Odin and tells him that without the hammer he can't defeat her. His father replies that he is not the god of hammers and that the Mjolnir only serves to channel power, but that it was never the source of his strength. Odin also says that Asgard is not a place but where the people are, stating that as long as the Asgardians exist, he will always have a home. Moved by what his father says, Thor awakens his powers and summons a gigantic attack that hits Hela squarely, sending her flying. 
At the height of his power, the son of Odin flies to the bridge and starts fighting the army of zombie warriors with his allies, defeating most of them. Seeing this, Scourge gives up serving Hela and drops his axe, joining the refugees and entering the ship. On the edge of Asgard, Hulk confronts Fenrir who sticks his fangs into his leg, making the Avenger even angrier. To strike back, the Hulk throws a super punch that sends the wolf flying, falling off the waterfall as he clings to the rocks. However, the fight isn't over yet and Hela is still standing. Needing to buy time, Thor says he'll face her and asks Loki to use Searcher's crown in the vault. While his brother runs to the ship, Thor and Valkyrie stay on the bridge to confront the goddess of destruction, buying time until everyone is on board. After Heimdall gets on board, Thor orders them to flee and Hela summons a stalagmite that holds up the ship, forming a bridge for her soldiers to climb aboard. Repentant, Scourge grabs two guns and starts firing at the zombies, jumping out of the ship and keeping the soldiers at bay. Because of his sacrifice, the citizens of Asgard manage to escape to safety while Scourge is eliminated by Hela. In Odin's vault, Loki passes through the Tesseract and places Searcher's skull in the eternal flame, causing the fire giant to return from the ashes. On the bridge, Hela approaches to eliminate the last Valkyrie when Thor interrupts her, saying that he has brought someone to fight her. At that moment, Sir Thor appears even larger than usual and begins to destroy Asgard's palace. Taking advantage of the distraction, Valkyrie manages to knock Hela down with a blow to the back and Thor takes the opportunity to break the piece of the bridge beneath her, knocking his older sister into the water. Thinking the fight is over, the Thunder God says they should let Sir Thor destroy Hela and Asgard, but the Hulk doesn't give a damn and jumps on the fire giant, punching him in the crown. When the Emerald Avenger is thrown back onto the bridge, Thor says they shouldn't crush the monster and manages to convince Hulk to back off, fleeing to the ship with the other inhabitants. After emerging from the water, Hela begins to drive giant stakes into Searcher's heart, but the fire giant is extremely overpowered and seems to feel no pain, driving his sword into the ground with maximum force. With this, he destroys the floating island, which disappears into the universe and is reduced to a cloud of gas and dust. After the fight is over, Thor decides to do as Odin suggested and starts leading the people of Asgard towards Earth, but they end up being intercepted by Thanos' ship. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.